I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, but thought that since my anniversary with this camera is coming soon, it would be best to wait and make sure I know what I'm saying. I believe now I know this camera very well, and that with all the images and video footage I've captured with it, you will find my review honest and accurate. I've tested and designed dozens of film recipes for this camera, I've shot a couple of music videos, both slow motion footage and 4K stills that show how flexible a tool this camera can be. But all this has been said before, and there are many reviews out there that focus on the specifications of X100V. What I want to do with this review is to show you how I've used this camera, and what it taught me about myself and my voice as a photographer. I titled this video Why Fujifilm X100V is important. In this modern age when film photography has become niche and expensive, there's only a handful of fully manual digital cameras that are not aimed entirely at the professionals, but photography enthusiasts, perhaps people who treat photography as their hobby and passion and art. Fujifilm's X100V is exactly that, and the X100 line has become incredibly popular ever since the first model launched in 2011. Still, a decade later, we can take excellent photographs with our smartphones. This camera, on the other hand, offers no zoom, it has a fixed lens, it's bigger and heavier, and if you look at pictures only on your phone, you might not even see any difference between its image quality and the latest iPhone. But don't get me wrong, X100V is what some professional reviewers said, the most capable, primeless, compact camera ever. It is up to you if you want to use its many features. I have always loved simplicity, clarity, air. As a previous Ricoh GR shooter, X100V isn't the smallest camera I've used, and I tend to keep it dangling on my neck. Still, never before have I been so careless about what I shoot. It is now more about what I see rather than what I want to see. And I never seem to search for my subjects anymore. I don't know if it's just in my case, but having this camera has been some sort of catharsis for me and my photography. And I've abandoned all editing software ever since I got it. I do not shoot RAW anymore, it's just JPEGs. I don't want to touch the images, they can be overexposed or underexposed, it doesn't matter. I think this was the best thing that could happen to me, I believe, especially if you happen to be passionate about photography ever since you can remember. There's nothing more liberating than allowing yourself to stand in front of something, see it for what it is, and embrace it with all its ugliness and beauty. Remove the frame guidelines, limit the interface and turn that screen off, save 30% of your battery and simply walk on. It is easy to forget about creativity and the joy of art and light and shadows when the in-camera processor does everything for you. Today, most of the pictures we see on the internet are perfectly exposed, both in the dark and bright areas, as it's all done by the chips in phones. Photography isn't like that, you have to make sacrifices, choose if you want to expose the sky or the land beneath it or find some kind of balance. My camera is hardly ever a tool now. It is an extra pair of eyes that I have adapted to help me capture what I recognize in the moment. 
As John Keats said, I think of beauty as a joy forever. If you look at my portfolio, you will notice a dramatic change. This is what my photography looked like. And this is what it looks like now. I can't be sure if you see the difference, but since it's my work, I know how different in style they are, and I find it interesting how different you can become once you start using another tool. If you give a different camera to, let's say, Ansel Adams, you you'd still look at the results and say it's Ansel Adams. I like to think that hasn't changed in my case, but what is there on the surface is clearly different now. And I like to think it's more beautiful, raw, untouched, free of any judgement. No sliders will be touched. I won't judge you, picture, you can remain as you are and be free. I am simply observing you as you are and I won't disrupt your stillness. I'm not trying to review this camera as a product that will help you with your work, I am merely advertising it as a tool to help with creativity, self-expression and, as in my case, almost some sort of meditation. I can imagine someone ill picking up a camera, or let's say a quiet and misunderstood child, or someone with some sort of physical impairment or mental disabilities, and find a bit of joy and peace with what this box of light and dark can bring you. I love when someone I love asks if they can take my camera and capture something. I always sort of wish they could keep it, knowing what kind of private joy it can bring. I'll show you some videos now and some more photographs and leave you to decide whether this kind of compact camera could be for you. I tend to use it in full manual mode to have as much control over my image as possible. I love to underexpose my pictures. But it is, after all, a very modern piece of tech that is only encased in this sleek and vintage body. What is great about it is that it has a fixed lens that will make you become way more intimate with your subjects. With X100V you have to move around, dance with it. And that's yet another reason why I like it so much. It will make you a better photographer and, if you let it and use it right, it might change you in a way that few cameras on the market could. Thank you for watching.